I'm going to talk a bit about the four foundations of mindfulness. So while a lot of the meditation practice that we have done thus far tends to uh, center around the breath, paying attention to the sensations of breathing, also guide you through sound, sometimes the sensations in the body, a body scan. There's so much that we can be aware of in our experience, both internally and externally. And so mindfulness, again, to bring up that definition is paying attention purposefully, non-judgmentally to the present moment. What's within the present moment? There's so much within the present moment and we can't pay attention to all of it there is a uh, very magical uh, evolutionary mechanism of the brain to cut off certain aspects of experience lest we become completely and entirely flooded by just the immense and intense truth of reality. And one of the most beautiful things about mindfulness practice is we can start to break down the different aspects of reality and start to, again, purposefully pay attention to them. Really, whereas there's a lot going on and our brains tend to delete a lot of it, there's an over deletion that happens. And so these practices really help us wake back up our facilities to pay attention, but not to pay attention in a way that is inherently flooded, but to be intentional about where we are directing our focus and also what we're gonna leave out. So for example, in this you know little guided meditation we did, you know. There are thoughts, there are emotions, there are sounds. Those are still part of the present moment. And yet we can choose to anchor into the breath, to let the breath be the predominant focus of our attention and sort of intentionally delete or just you know let rest the rest of it. So there's this skillfulness that we can learn to choose how to use our attention in a way that's most suitable for us and to wake up our facilities in these different arenas, these four foundations of mindfulness as they're called is um, a lifelong practice. One that's gonna be unique for each person where you uh, want to focus is gonna be different. And just to give you an outline of what they are, so that you can maybe inquire about what types of practices are gonna support you most in your life and what you need and where your attention is um, in most need of cultivation. So the first foundation of mindfulness is mindfulness of the body. And just to give you a full outline, it's mindfulness of the body, mindfulness of feelings, mindfulness of thoughts, and mindfulness of phenomenon of reality which i'll go into it sounds very esoteric i gotta come up with a better way to describe that but i'll tell you what i mean in a moment anywho mindfulness of the body is kind of where we've been starting and there's a reason for that because the body is where life is we experience life through the five senses that's our human capacity uh through sight sound smell taste and I lost track, but you know the five are. And when we arrive into the body and when we focus on the breath, we really cultivate this connection, this mindfulness of body. And this is very grounding, grounds us in the present, grounds us in our environment. And it's the first foundation of mindfulness for, for those reasons. It, it is the primary gateway to open up to 
more of reality in a grounded way rather than an overwhelmed way. So that's where we start. And that's where a lot of practice is, is built around. It's just focusing on the sensations of the breath and the body in this moment, moment to moment. Can we really reconnect with and cultivate this, this reconnection with our body? Because so much of us are so disconnected from our bodies in this day and age, especially with screens. Anytime you're looking at a screen, even now there is the tendency to kind of lose a connection to yourself. Anytime we're on social media or we're lost in thought, we can disconnect from our body. And our bodies hold incredible innate intelligence that we um, would be better off having online and to benefit in cultivating a reconnection to that intuition and that healing capacity within our body. So we start there. We start by arriving into the present moment, into the here and now through the body. The second foundation is mindfulness of feelings. There's a very just kind of black and white sense to that. There's pleasant and unpleasant sensations. You know, does this feel good? Does this feel bad? So it's one aspect of it. And as you're paying attention to the body, you might notice, you know, an ache in your elbow. And there is mindfulness that that doesn't feel good. That's uncomfortable. And then there might be a lightness in your hands. And there might be a sense that that's a good feeling. So there's kind of the, the, the pain pleasure dynamic is something that we be, we can become aware of again in this mindful way with with less judgment you know and this is valuable in that we spend so much time pushing away pain and trying to hold on to pleasure this is like the most primitive human drive and as we can learn to be with pain and pleasure good and bad sensations with a little bit more objectivity and balance we're actually much less ruled by that approach to functioning in life so there's immense value in building mindfulness around the difference between pleasant and unpleasant sensations there's of course also our emotions you know mindfulness of anger of sadness of grief and this emotional capacity that we have exists in the body um, almost entirely. There are thoughts attached to it, stories attached to it, beliefs attached to it, but emotions themselves truly exist within the body. We may feel anger and anxiety in the chest. We may feel sadness, grief in the stomach or excitement in the stomach. These sensations live in the body. We can become aware of those. And this is really the pathway to emotional intelligence. Can I start to become aware of what emotions feel like in the body? Can I map the territory of my emotional experience as a human being? If you've ever seen a list of emotions, there are like hundreds of thousands of them. You know, talk about the four main ones in improv, mad, glad, sad, and a frad. Mad, glad, sad, and afraid. You can break it down to that four, but each of those has infinite subset flavors. You know, sadness can be disappointment or grief or melancholy. And each of these have a unique experience within the body. And so we can start to become aware of that. And there's immense power in that just in, you know, in one sense, just in reconnecting with our body's natural ability to process emotions rather than getting stuck in them. And we get stuck in what is stuck underneath the surface of our awareness. And in our practices to become more aware of how feelings arise and are present in the body, we can begin to be with these feelings in a way that honors them and then lets them move. We get so stuck, all this junk underneath the surface. And so as we become more aware of emotions 
in the body, we empower ourselves to be less burdened by the effect of emotions in life and also to experience life more fully. The whole rainbow of human experience is quite an emotional one. So we can explore that territory. Mindfulness of thoughts is the third foundation of mindfulness. And as described in a past talk, you know, we're learning to become aware of thoughts without being so infatuated and entangled by thoughts. When we may notice thinking in daily life, but there's a difference between noticing him hey, thinking and being very caught up in thinking and oh, there's a lot of thinking going on and we're resisting thinking and I wish I was thinking so much and yada, yada, yada. And, and mindful awareness of thinking, which again, removing the judgment is so essential. Creating the space from our thoughts is where we gain more sovereignty from the experience of the thinking mind, which will just go absolutely bonkers if we don't learn to relate to thinking in a healthier, more mindful way. And so we can begin to explore the territory of thinking. I'm not sure if we did this practice in, in one of the past couple of weeks, but there's a noting practice, which is really beautiful, which we just note, whispering to ourselves, ah, oh, thinking. Anytime we notice that we're thinking, you can even categorize this. You can note, oh, planning. Oh, there's worrying. And each time we note, we kind of label, we're creating a little bit of space. And we can begin to, instead of grabbing on for dear life to whatever intoxicating thought or story has just gripped our attention and being pulled across the sky by it, we can learn to rest back into mindful awareness and let thoughts pass in the sky of our mind, the open sky of our mind, like clouds in the sky. And that doesn't mean that there aren't thunderous, intense, storm clouds, even hurricane level five, category five kind of moments. But as we begin to practice and build awareness and mindfulness and space and acceptance, and compassion around the thinking mind and the types of thoughts that really intoxicate us, we become less ruled by them. We become less pulled by them. And there is immense freedom in that space. Finally, and I don't think I'm going to go too much into this, but just to touch on it, the fourth foundation of mindfulness is, is mindfulness of phenomenon, for lack of a better term. There are a couple aspects of the nature of reality that um, can be articulated and felt in meditation practice. And last week we talked about change and impermanence. And so one of the primary phenomenon of reality that we can start to become aware of is the ever-changing nature of reality. So we can sit with the breath and instead of having the intention be to just focus on the sensations themselves, we can kind of slightly adjust our attention or excuse me, our intention to be such that we're paying attention to the movement of the breath, how each moment is truly this just breath of water molecules flowing down a river in this ever moving, ever changing, impermanent, unstill existence. And we can really connect with that through our practice. And you can connect with this impermanence through the breath, through sounds can be really a beautiful way to practice. Um, but even thoughts, as you start to become in relationship to thoughts, such as the, the clouds passing analogy, you can see that thoughts come. And if we don't grab them, they actually, they just go. 
they are impermanent as well. Same with emotions. We can see that emotions come up, and if we witness them without clinging to them or pushing them away, they will also fall away. Another one of the phenomenon that we can become mindful of is craving. And this is what is spoken to in Buddhist philosophy as the source of all suffering. It's not that we have the experience of anger. It's not that we have the thought of, oh, that asshole, how could they? It's that we hold on to it or that we push it away. Either clinging or aversion, this push and pull, and this kind of comes back to that pain pleasure dynamic and how we have this drive deep in our reptilian brain to try to avoid as much pain as possible and create as much pleasure as possible. And that an overdrive without mindful awareness is actually creating a lot of suffering in our life. They say that, you know, pain is a necessity in life and suffering is optional. It's much more think, complex and easier said than done. But it's in our resistance to what is, or it's in our holding on to what we cannot hold on to, that we really get ourselves in trouble. And so we can start to see this and experience this phenomenon in our practice in all of these different arenas and notice how it makes us feel. Notice the suffering of trying to hold on to and feed a thought pattern. Notice the suffering of trying to push away uh, a difficult feeling and learning to just be with and release that tendency. Finally, we can get in touch with our interconnectedness, or as it's called in, in Buddhist tradition, non-self. You know, if you really deeply create enough space from all of these experiences that we have, the experience of the five senses, of feelings, of emotions, of thoughts, of life moving and constantly changing, there is this sense that the identity that I'm convinced that I have is really just a phenomenon in and of itself. That if I am behind and watching, I can sense that in truth, I am connected to everything around me, that there is no separation, that there is just spaciousness. And I alluded to that in our opening meditation, the spaciousness in between, the silence in between all the sounds, like you can feel that. On an atomic level, there is nothing but space in between atoms and quarks and electrons. We are mostly just space and energy that has form on the level that we're interacting for sure. And we can really sense when we drop back deep enough that it's all connected. And we can explore and deepen our connection to that connection with our mindfulness practice as well. So this is a big, this is a big ass map. And it's not something to attain. It's not something to perfect. You really want to go all in, go be a monk, sit in a cave, meditate for a lifetime. You can get it all done. You can enlighten, you can transcend. But us living in the modern world, it's not really the balance we're looking for. The question is, where in this map am I most in need of growth? You know, as a man, I can tell you being very disconnected from my body, very disconnected from my emotions. It has absolutely been a intentional mission within my practice to do embodied practices over the past two years and to become 
more conscious of my emotions. So there's an intentionality behind our choice and, and what kind of practice we pursue. As someone who can be very heady, it also becomes very valuable to, to practice some mindfulness of thinking and, and create some space and awareness in that dimension. But we can pick and choose where we go and what we need most. And there's no right path. It's all the right path. Your path is the right path. And there's a trust in the process and in the cultivation of these qualities that we can have. And over time, this compounds. And then over time, what we grow in one area contributes to that of another. And we can grow this big territory, this spaciousness of mindfulness into this really, really big and beautiful full experience of the life that we're living, of the life living through us, of this really beautiful present moment. Thank you for listening to that.